Hello out there. Good morning, everyone, or good evening, wherever you are. My name is Selma Edgar. Hi there, Dandy, in, in Gash, Admin, Mike. Hello, everyone. This is me. My name is Selma Edgar, and I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. The names are coming up really fast so I can't greet each one individually but I welcome each of you to my broadcast. I am uh, married to Norman. We are Protestant Christian missionaries. Hello there Reese Brian. Welcome everyone. Norman and I always specify that we are Protestant Christian missionaries because we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. It's the only true book. It's the only true book from God to man. It's the only book of truth that tells the world that they must repent and be born again in order to go to heaven. The world is full of false religions. Okay, Reese, the topic today um, is I'm starting out with the song Amazing Grace and then I am going to go from there. I'm going to talk about the light of Jesus. So, I know that many people are familiar with the song Amazing Grace. And I'm just going to talk about the first verse today. And I actually wrote it down here. If there's anyone out there that's not familiar with it. But I know that anyone who's ever been to a Protestant church has heard this song. And a lot of times it's even sung at funerals. But the thing is, most people, I believe, do not really understand what this verse is saying. It is a beautiful, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful song about God's grace. And there is nothing else in the entire world that compares to God's grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Well, thank you for coming on. Um, hopefully, it will help you by listening to me. That is the only way that I can help you with your English because my purpose in being on Periscope is to talk about Jesus and the way of salvation. So I will try to remember to speak distinctly but that is the only help that I can give you so far as English but the most important help I hope you can understand English well enough to hear the gospel message. That's the greatest help that I can give to you or to anyone else, is to learn about Jesus and the way of salvation so that you can be spiritually born again and make heaven your eternal home instead of the lake of fire in hell because there is no other choices it says in the protestant christian bible new testament which is the only true book from god that everyone when they die will either go to heaven or to hell god does not choose for us Okay, well, thank you for coming on, and again, my emphasis is to tell you about Jesus. It's not to help you with your English, but if it helps 
by listening to me, that's great too. So, this song, Amazing Grace, I realize that people in many cultures probably don't know this song. In America, it is very well known. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Hello there, welcome. My name is Selma. I'm talking about God's grace and about Jesus. So, I want to explain what this verse Thank you, Minnie Soon. You're welcome. I am doing very well. I hope you are too. The meaning of this verse is talking about being saved. It says, God's grace saved a wretch like me. Okay. So, why is it saying a wretch? Right here. I am 69 years old. I'm married to Norman and we live in St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. The song is saying how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Why would the song refer to a person as a wretch? The reason is, yes, the reason is that everyone who was born is born with a sin nature. That is because of the original sin committed by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Therefore, I'm at home in St. Charles, Missouri. Therefore, because we are born as sinners, is who going to heaven? Brian, who are you talking about? Because we're all born as sinners, that's why, yes, Norman and I are both spiritually born again. And therefore, the Bible says when you're spiritually born again, you can know that you will spend eternity in heaven. And that is as long as you obey the teachings of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. And that's the only book. Well, hello, Georgia. Welcome. Many soon, looks like. Thank you for listening. So the song is talking about saving a wretch. The wretch, word wretch, again, is referring to sinners. Everyone is a sinner. Yes. Protesting against the false religions, and in particular, the Catholic Church. Everyone who is a sinner which everyone is when they're born, needs to be spiritually born again, and that is what the word saved means in this song. God's grace, it says, saved a wretch like me. Or it can say God's grace saved me, a sinner. And then it says, I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. So what does that mean? I once was lost, but now I'm found. A person who is a sinner, who's never been born again yet, they're lost in the darkness. Because sin is darkness. You can't find your way in the dark. And that's why you're lost. But when you 
are spiritually born again, then you are saved, the song says. And it says, I was blind, but now I see. So, again, this is referring to the same thing. When you were a sinner living in the darkness, thank you. When you are a sinner living in the darkness, you are blind spiritually. Just as if, if you were physically blind, then you can't, and you can't see anything, then obviously you are actually living in the dark. Well, it's the same way when you are a sinner and not spiritually born again, you are blind, you are spiritually blind. You can't see your way when you're spiritually blind. It's like you're groping around in this world of darkness and you don't really know where you're going. But when you're spiritually born again, then you can see. That's what this song is about. Then you have the light of God. You have spiritual light. And so, that leads me to the next part of my message this morning. And I had a person um, the last time I was on ask me, what do you think about enlightenment? Thank you very much. I'm glad about that. I had a person the other day ask me, what do you think about enlightenment? And I know they were referring to what is called the Age of Enlightenment. It was a period of time in history. And, you know, if you want to know what that is about, certainly you can Google it, because I'm not interested in talking about that. But... I'm mentioning that because Jesus is the light of the world. When they asked me that question, it just really set my mind to running in this direction about the light. And I'm going to read just a few verses here from the book of Acts. It's about the heavenly light of God. And this is, this is an important part of my message today. It's in the book of Acts, chapter 9. If anyone wants to read it for yourself, obviously you can read as much as you want. I'm just going to read the first few verses. This, this is in the time after Jesus ascended back to heaven and... The early church was beginning. Many people had followed Jesus, and many of them became spiritually born again, and, and the first church was started. Good morning, Liam. And so, this is talking about a man named Saul. Saul was... Uh, a, one of the great religious leaders at the time. He was a Pharisee and he knew the Old Testament and he was very zealous about living for God. Very zealous for living by the laws of God in the Old Testament. And he thought he was on the right track. He thought that when Jesus came and many of the people followed him and believed in him and they started the first churches there, Saul thought those early believers, those first Christians, were all wrong. Hello there, OID. Welcome.
Well, we, Norman and I, are followers of Jesus, and we will go wherever God wants us to go. Right now, our work is to minister to the world the message of Jesus Christ through Periscope. So this man Saul was out to get those early Christians. He thought they were all wrong. So I'm going to read these few verses. It says, Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, and that's referring to the followers of Jesus, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. That was the heavenly light of God. God saw what Saul was doing. God knew that Saul was very zealous for God, but he was misguided. Saul was misguided. He did not understand that Jesus was truly the Messiah. And so God literally knocked him off of his horse. And Jesus told him, you think you are persecuting the people, but you are actually persecuting me. And he said, now get up and you'll find out what I want you to do. So amazingly then, Saul listened to Jesus. And all the events that happen from that point on are told in this book of Acts, if anybody wants to read it. And there's much to learn in there. So Saul became a different man. Okay, well thank you for listening. And... Saul then became a believer in Jesus. He spent time alone. He spent days alone communing with God. And, honey, I can hear you, but I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, uh, my husband Norman is in the other room. And in response to what I said, he said, 15 years. Hello there, Tony Jr. Welcome. So, all right. Thank you for coming and listening. I hope you can come back. So, Saul was converted. He became spiritually born again. The Bible says it was as if the scales were removed from his eyes. He was blind, as the song says, Amazing Grace. He was blind, but now he could see. Hello there, welcome. This is me, Selma Edker. And I'm talking about Jesus, about the heavenly light of God, and how Saul 
when Saul was converted, became a believer in Jesus, when he became spiritually born again, God changed his name to Paul. And the Apostle Paul, hello there, Mark, welcome. The Apostle Paul then was one of the greatest men of God who ever lived, and he wrote many of the epistles in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. It was the heavenly light of God that totally changed him. And that is what can happen to any person in the world. Jesus said many things, but two I'm going to quote right now. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, I am the light of the world. Why does the world need light? Light dispels the darkness. Light shows you the way to go. Sin is darkness. Everyone who's living in sin is groping around in the darkness of the world trying to find answers. Some are just so self-satisfied with their, with their life that they think they don't even need God and don't even want to think about God. There are some who are so miserable on the inside that they won't turn their thoughts to God. Instead, they'll drink and I know I know a lady who just a few days ago died from an alcoholic binge and it's it's a terrible tragedy she just drank herself literally to death Many people do that, or they take drugs, or they, they live for a perverse life with all kinds of sex, or some men chase after women, or vice versa. There's pedophiles. There's some people who fill their lives with the pursuit of money. Some fill their lives with the pursuit of pleasure of all kinds. Some, some's only goal is to climb the corporate ladder and become somebody important. There's all kinds of ways. For some it's sports. Norman and I saw a program the other night about, it was called uh, CrossFit. We had not heard of it before, but it was a program about all these people from all over the world who spend their lives training, physically training to be the very best at these cross. CrossFit sports. That's all their life consists of. There's others who live just for their pets. And so many people nowadays, they treat their pets like they are their children. And that's what they live for. All of these things that I've mentioned are Antichrist. It is attempts by people to find some kind of satisfaction in life. There's an old song that, it's an old song, <laughs> it was called Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. 
as, and this is people looking for satisfaction in all the wrong places. There's only one thing, one person, who can satisfy the inner longings that people have. There's a verse in the Protestant Christian Bible that says, He will satisfy the longing soul and fill the hungry soul with goodness. The He in that verse is Jesus. When God created mankind, He created us with a void on the inside that only He can fill. Because His purpose for us is that we would live for Him and worship Him and serve Him. And that's the only true satisfaction there is in life. And it is only by the heavenly light, the light of truth, that a person can come from being blind to be able to see, from being lost to being found. God so loves the world that he sent Jesus to pay the penalty for the sins of all mankind. Sin, which everyone is a sinner, as I have explained. Everyone is a sinner. And that's why Jesus said, you must be born again. We are born as sinners. We have to be reborn to be free of that sin nature and to become a child of God. God loves mankind so much. God created mankind. And in the very beginning, you can read it in the book of Genesis in the Protestant Christian Bible. In the very beginning, as soon as Adam and Eve committed that first sin, God promised that one day there would be a Savior who would overcome the power of evil and deliver mankind from the sin nature. And that one is Jesus. He is the only one. The world says there's many ways many ways to heaven. Those are lies of the devil. There's only one way, and that way is Jesus. And since I'm talking about the light, the heavenly light, Jesus, as I've said, is the light. When he was here on the earth, he said, I am the light of the world. And then he told his disciples that when he would ascend back to heaven to be with God the Father, that then they were to be lights in the world. And that is still true today. Every person who becomes spiritually born again is then to be a light in the darkness of this world. To shine the light of truth so that others may hear and be saved. So I have a couple of things on my desk that are constant reminders of our mission as Protestant Christian missionaries. I have, well I have three things actually. This is my picture of a lighthouse. And I really like this picture. It's a lighthouse out in the water. You can see a storm is, is coming. The waves are turning. The clouds are dark. And the purpose of the lighthouse is to shine a light out for the ships to be able to find their way. 
And then I have this, this little lantern. It's like a hurricane lantern. We got it at a thrift store. And it's just a symbol for us that we are to shine this light out in the darkness for Jesus. And then I have one more thing, and I showed these a few times on Periscope. Again, this is from a thrift store, and it's a little lighthouse. And interestingly enough, I've always been fascinated by lighthouses, and that was even before I became a Christian. For some reason, I just thought they were really neat. And I found this one at a thrift store a couple of years ago. And I especially like it because it runs on a battery. I'm going to turn it on. And you'll be able to see the light flash. Not only that, it has the sound, sound of the waves. Sound of the ship horn and the seagulls. So I think that is so neat. So, again, these things are symbolic of our ministry work as disciples of Jesus. We are to shine the light of truth, warning people, just as the lighthouses were warnings for the ship and to help them see the rocks out in the water so they wouldn't run on the rocks and, and be torn apart. Hello there, Jolly Jim. This is my name, Salma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in St. Charles, Missouri, and I'm talking about the light of Jesus and the way of salvation. Only Jesus is the way. Jesus is God, and because He is God, he was a God-man. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God in his mother, Mary. She was a, a sinful woman, just like every other person that is born. But God chose her to conceive Jesus in her womb. And he grew up and he lived a sinless life even though the devil tempted him many times to do wrong Jesus stood strong and he never gave in to any temptations from the devil Jesus knew what his mission was and that was to be the atonement for the sins of all mankind and he did it willingly in spite of all the suffering he suffered unbelievable agony, and you can read about it in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. He suffered many physical sufferings even before he went to the cross. God required a perfect blood sacrifice to be the atonement for the sins of all mankind. And on another day, I'm going to talk more in depth about that. The sacrifice had to be a perfect sacrifice. Sin requires punishment. And so, God did not want to pour out His wrath on all humans because of His love for us. So he made a way so that we would not have to be punished for our sins. And that way is Jesus. Jesus willingly went to the cross. He allowed the people to drive big spikes through his hands and his feet and nail him to the cross. 
and he hung there on the cross and all the sins of mankind forever were poured out upon Jesus. That was the wrath of God. Jesus took our punishment. God had to turn his back on Jesus just for a moment because he cannot be in the presence of sin. And that was the greatest agony of all for Jesus. But he did it out of his immeasurable love. When Jesus died, he was in the grave for three days. And he said before he died, he said, I have power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it up again. That's because he was a God man. So he was in the grave for three days and then he arose and that's called the resurrection. And then his ascension, meaning he ascended back to heaven and he is at the right hand of God the Father. The Bible tells us that. And he is there so that we can pray to the Father in his name. And Jesus is the only one who can forgive our sins. It is by God's grace alone. Just as the song says, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. We can only see by the grace of God. God's grace is his power and love and favor, his mercy. God is always reaching out to all people. God's grace is wooing people giving them a desire to seek after him. God's grace is his enabling power to help us to understand about God and about Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. It's giving you an awareness to seek after God, to realize that you need God, that you need a Savior. And I think that is a great problem in the world today that most people do not believe they need a Savior. They think they are self-sufficient and they believe the lies of the devil through all the false religions. Some teach that there's not even a hell some teach that it's all about good works. You can earn your way to heaven by being a good person and helping others. Some teach that there's a transmigration of the soul. Some teach reincarnation. On and on. All the lies of the devil to deceive people so they will end up in hell. It's only by God's grace. One of the most important verses in the Bible, in Ephesians, it says, It is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. The whole thing is a gift of God. God's mercy towards us is a gift from God. His love towards us. We do not deserve his love. We do not deserve his forgiveness. We do not deserve his favor. But that is the immeasurable love of God. He does not want people to go to hell. It says in the Bible that hell was created for the devil and his angels, those who rebelled against God. It was never meant for people to go there. But people of the world are just as rebellious against God as Satan and those fallen angels were. People think they are living 
their life the way they want to live it, that they are their own boss, that they are creating their own destiny. In actuality, it is Satan who is in control of your life if you have not been spiritually born again. There is a spiritual war going on over your soul. It is between Satan and God. And Satan is tugging at everyone, luring them, tempting them in every way possible to get them away from God and to go to hell with him. Sin is darkness, and that darkness is covering your mind. It's like a veil. But God's grace can remove that veil if you have ears to hear the gospel message. The gospel message is grace, as I just explained. It is justification. That means being justified back to God, being reconciled back to God by Jesus' atonement on the cross. It's by faith in Jesus' atonement that one can be justified before God. It is believing by faith through God's grace that Jesus took your place. Jesus was a substitute. He sacrificed his life for yours. If you believe that by faith, then you must repent in order to be spiritually born again. To repent means not only that you turn from your old life, it's not just saying, I'm sorry, and I won't do it again. Repentance is turning to the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, and agreeing in your heart that you will obey Jesus, that you will serve Jesus alone, that you will surrender your life to God. When you make that decision in your heart, in your mind, and God will know if you're sincere, you cannot fool God. When you do that sincerely, then the Holy Spirit of God will indwell your heart. It is a supernatural transformation that takes place. And the love of God is then shed abroad into your heart, the Bible says. You're a whole new creation in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. And then your desires change. You no longer want to live the way you lived before. Sin is no longer attractive to you when you're spiritually born again. But God gives you a new joy, a new purpose in life, a desire to please Him, a desire to read His Word. And then He will guide you what He wants you to do. It's a supernatural transformation. Only by the grace of God and by your faith in the gospel message, by your surrendering your heart and life totally to obey God. It's the beginning of a whole new life. Just as it was with Paul, with Saul, who was transformed into Paul. And he changed from persecuting the Christians 
into becoming one of God's greatest servants. He was a whole new man. And that's what God will do for anyone who chooses to live for Jesus and obey Him. There's a song just came to my mind, there's no other way but to trust and obey in Jesus. That's all I can remember of the song right now. No other way but to trust and obey in Jesus. When you do that, you then can have the assurance that one day when you die, you will spend eternity in heaven. There's no other decision in your life that will be so important as this decision. Not only that, if you make that choice, then your future decisions will all be different than what they would have been in your old way of life. Because God has better things for you. Now that does not mean you will never have any heartache or trouble or trials or difficulties. That part of life does not change whether you're a sinner or a child of God. And notice I said sinner or a child of God. It's one or the other. You cannot be a sinner and be a child of God. You're only a child of God when you're spiritually born again. That's the truth spoken by Jesus. That's good. Thank you, honey. My husband just gave me a thumbs up on that, so I appreciate that. So, my friends, my heart grieves for those of you who refuse to stay and listen to the gospel message are for those who listen and then reject it it is not your sins that will keep you from going to heaven but it is the greatest sin of rejecting Jesus as your Lord and Savior is a combination but the thing is when you're spiritually born again you are no longer a sinner and you won't continue to sin it is possible for a true Christian to occasionally mess up and, and commit a sin and when you do the Holy Spirit will let you know and you just ask God to forgive you and he will but you don't sin all the time like sinners do. It should never be a daily thing. And that is what some of the Protestant Christian churches teach is that you're going to sin every day regardless. That is a true lie of the devil. I remember a, I went to a interfaith Bible study years ago before I was spiritually born again. And I remember the leader, just as clear as day, she's, and supposedly we who were attending this Bible study were believed to be Christians. I thought I was. I didn't know any better, just like so many other people. But she said, we are sinners till the day we die. That is a lie of the devil. It is if you're never born again, that is true. But when you're spiritually born again, you are no longer a sinner. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So, my friends, that is my message for today. I appreciate those of you who have listened. I hope you will take it to heart. And that one day you may truly repent and belong to Jesus.
I'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing. Bye for now.